All right, next on deck is the F9 Panther. This is my combat tested plane. You can see here all of the damages that's been done to this thing. So many glue jobs, it's just incredible. Wings have separated several times, broken across the bottom. Just put a little old epoxy on it and you can see it's still pretty stiff through here. I just did a repair last night, matter of fact. So here we go, we're fixing a pitch this in the air and give it a try. I got low rates on the ailerons and mid rate on the elevator. Winds are coming out of the north about right almost five miles an hour. Come over here to a spot in the field where we ain't gonna be standing in a ant farm. Down here in Texas we got these fire ants that are pretty killer this time of year. Alright. Here we go. Coming off the throttle a little bit. This is on a four cell battery. 1800. 18 or 16, I don't remember actually. And if I recall, my elevator, it's got elevator uh, control surface on both sides of the vertical. And if I recall, it's not quite synced up. It was last time I tried to do a, a loop. Yeah, it rolls right out of it. They act as uh, ailerons when they're not lined up perfectly. So I definitely will need to fix that before I fly it again. Sorry, I know it's a small plane. It's probably getting out a little far. Try to keep it in a little closer now. Do a slow fly by in front of us. This is on a uh, 4S battery. I did nothing at all to the uh, motor. It's right at the edge of stall right there. Yeah, I did nothing at all to the motor. Uh, I did put in a 50 amp ESC into it though so that I could uh, enjoy a fast flight if I wanted to. There's max throttle. This has no rudder on it so you're bank and yank only. And again we're at low rates on the ailerons and it's, it really lets you handle it well in my opinion. If you get much more control surface, she gets a little wonky in the air. That's the one drawback when you lower down your aileron rates to make it a much more stable flyer. That's going to be more for scale flight. If you want to do some axial rolls and stuff, you just need to come up a little higher on the throw rate. Just put it on a switch that you can flick off and on. I set mine up, actually all my planes I set up with three position. Uh, uh, and each one's on a separate switch. That way if I want to dial in a uh, higher rate on the aileron and lower rate on a rudder or something or vice versa, I can with no problem. There's our timer. We'll make one more high speed pass still burning it at high speed this thing glides really well so just keep that in mind when you're trying to land it you need a lot of a lot of ground so as you can see right there she landed right about here where my finger's at. And from there to here, it may not look like it, but that's probably about 40 feet. Maybe even closer to 50. From here to the end of the runway is about 150 feet. So, give you some perspective. When you're coming in for that belly skid, especially if the grass is wet like now, 
she really has got some uh, slipping and sliding to do. All right, F9 Panther, great little plane, $98 from Motion RC. Comes stock with a five blade fan. It's designed to fly on a 3S battery, but my experience at 3S battery just really isn't a tremendous amount of fun. It'll fly on it, don't get me wrong. I mean, I even on my first one, I even put landing gear on it and it would take off on the grass. Uh, with a 3S battery with the wheels. However, launching it by hand with a 3S battery, uh, I found to be prob problemsome. Unless you really got a gorilla grip on it and give it a Peyton Manning toss on it, you're going to not like the results. Alright, F9F Panther, thanks for watching.